Yo, welcome back to my channel. These are the movies I watched in August of 2024. Starting this month off with Tarkovsky's Stalker. This is a movie that I've known about, but haven't known a lot about for a fair amount of time. Like, it's just kind of been something in the back of my mind. Like, this seems interesting. I kind of want to watch that. I didn't really know what it was about. And I've been interested in Tarkovsky's work uh, in general as I've learned a bit more about some of his other works. And so I gave this a watch. And it's a really interesting movie not a lot of movies like this it's probably like one of the slowest paced movies i've ever seen and i definitely felt that at times but i felt once i got past like the first chunk of the movie i think the pacing was uh better or there's just more interesting stuff going on that kept me invested uh, one thing that definitely kept me interested throughout this whole movie was the dialogue the dialogue is so great like there, there are times in this movie where i was feeling bored i was kind of like uh, i don't know how much more I can pay attention but the dialogue not only did it get me back into the movie but I was like locked in it was so engaging and so interesting but this movie is still it suffers from that pacing I think you know it's okay to have slow pacing but there are times when it feels like we're not really doing anything it's not just slow we're just at a standstill so I do kind of feel like that could have been cleaned up a bit but overall it was just an overall fascinating movie it's got a really interesting ideas behind it and it's very an idea centric movie I guess you could say just because it's not about specific things it's just a bunch of ideas floating around put into this movie very fascinating in that way next up I watched Parasite this movie is so highly acclaimed by critics and the general audience alike and I can definitely see why just because everything this movie does is just great like from the characters to the plot to the themes everything it just hits its mark really well and it makes it a movie where it's not something you can really find many flaws in there's definitely things you could have personal preferences about but it's very well made and it you know does everything it needs to if i like were to get nitpicky about it and this is like super nitpicky i didn't feel any huge amount of impact by any one specific thing uh the tension wasn't as high as i wanted it to but those are like really nitpicky especially as i said everything is great but saying it's nothing more than great is like that's not even a flaw because this movie is amazing something that actually did stand out to me was the music and the way they use music in scenes is just incredible i loved it a lot and yeah, overall, just an incredible movie. And it's a movie that I would definitely recommend to like pretty much anyone just because I feel like it's not too hard of a watch. It can be a bit heavy, but if, you know, obviously, depending on the person, they might not be able to handle that. But what I'm saying is that it's a movie that a lot of people can like. Mirror is another Tarkovsky film. After watching Stalker, I enjoyed it, but I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about Tarkovsky overall. He's clearly interesting to me, but I, I, I was a bit, you know, uneasy. I was like, I'm going to you know, see some of his other movies and see how I feel about him. But I was super happy with Mirror. I just absolutely loved it. And this, you know, made me realize that Tarkovsky really does have something, some great talent as a director, because this is just in incredible it's an absolutely stunning movie i think it's beautiful one of the big selling points of stalker i think was the visuals but i think they're even better in mirror i think i really like the camera work there's some really like surreal imagery that's super striking and the overall ideas behind it it's about you know memories and just this guy reflecting upon his life and i think it's really cool because it's not super complicated of a theme or idea but it's done in such a surreal and interesting way and it makes it so much more impactful and i think there's a lot of depth in here but it's not a movie that you're gonna sit here and you know pick apart and dissect like scientifically or anything it's just a lot of feeling and emotions and it just really worked for me it's an incredible movie and then i watched Le samurai I, it's just french for the samurai and this one just didn't really work for me. There's nothing outright atrocious with this movie or anything, but I didn't feel like there was really anything all that great or anything that really caught my attention. I think it, the camera work was pretty good, and I think there's some shots that are pretty interesting. But overall, a lot of this stuff just had me bored and disinterested. This, I believe, is my first proper noir film. I did watch In a Lonely Place, but that one wasn't as much of a noir. And this one, it really is. And having just that, you know, 
cool, collected, sort of emotionless main character where he's supposed to be really, really tough. I just find it really not interesting and I don't really care about him or, you know, his connections to other characters or really anything about him. And that really makes this movie not great for me because, you know, the main character, I need to have that connection if I want to be interested in this movie. And I just wasn't. And other than that, like the overall plot wasn't super interesting. And yeah, I was just kind of bored. It's not terrible, like nothing super bad about it, but it's just not something I cared about in the least. City Lights, this is just a really good, solid, you know, slapstick comedy silent era film. This is my second Charlie Chaplin film. The only other one I've seen is Modern Times. And I do like Modern Times quite a bit more than this, but City Lights is still quite good all around. I think people have said that they felt a uh, pretty strong emotion from this film. I didn't really get that. I think Modern Times had that for me, but this one not as much. But that didn't really matter too much. I think it's still fun. It's enjoyable, and that's all it really needs to be. And then I actually watched Spider-Man No Way Home. There's normally like a couple of curveballs I have in these videos. I normally have a central theme and then a couple other extra movies, but this one is quite the curveball. I was just hanging out with friends and we just, you know, wanted to watch a chill, easy movie that everyone would enjoy. You know, there's a lot of people there. You want to watch something that's easier to digest. I know I'm a bit of an outlier when it comes to my movie taste. And anyways, like the Spider-Man movies for the Marvel Universe, I think are actually pretty good. They're some of the best to come out of the MCU. Uh, I don't think they're incredible. Like the MCU in general, I think is pretty like average of a you know six out of ten they never really do anything incredible but i did i don't think they do anything too terrible and this movie kind of follows in that suit in some ways but i do think it has quite a few special things about it i mean i love william defoe and i love his performance as the green goblin that's just great and i enjoyed you know doc og him coming back but other villains it really feels weird especially since i know that Andrew Garfield's movies, they're not very well received. People don't love those movies. And it really comes through here with just flat villains that take up a lot of time. This movie, you know, much longer than it needs to be. There's a lot of characters to focus on. And a lot of them are just not interesting. And I don't care to see them. But overall, this is a solid movie. Like, I don't blame anyone for liking it. Ivan's Childhood. Getting back to Tarkovsky. Yeah, this is a, this is a really special film, I feel. It's really hits really hard. Uh, I feel it's quite personal to Tarkovsky. I felt those ideas coming through in Mirror where a lot of things were based on his own life. But this one, it, I, from what I understand, quite a bit of inspiration. Obviously, you know, not everything is dramatized and there's a bunch of other things. It's not based on his life, but there's some clear inspirations. Tarkovsky did grow up, you know, during World War II. It was quite brutal and showing a kid going through those experiences, it hits really hard. I haven't seen a whole lot of war films, to be honest, but having one like this feels really unique. Following through the eyes of a child, and it really does a great way of balancing sort of innocence as well as that really heavy, just depressing stuff because it's war. It's brutal. And the ending, man, it just hit me. I'm not going to say anything too much, but it like really had a big effect on me. I thought really hard about this movie immediately upon finishing it. And I continued to think about it. And I'm sure I will continue to have this movie just enter into my thoughts all the time because it, it just hits. It has a really deep impression upon me and it's very good. And then Solaris. I noticed out of the four Tarkovsky films I watched, Two of them are more sci-fi focused, those being Solaris and Stalker, while those other two are more personal stories, more related to Tarkovsky's life. And I think I like those ones uh, quite a bit more, but these sci-fi ones are not bad by any means. Uh, Solaris, it's a really interesting story. You know, you got this psychiatrist that's going to, you know, this uh, space uh, base, I guess, on this distant planet where some of the people and scientists that have been there, they've been exhibiting some you know, slightly insane behavior. And so it's really interesting. I got pretty invested once we actually got to that. I have to make that clear because the first like initial introduction, that chunk of the movie is so hard to get into. And I, it was just really hard. I was not caring about anything that was going on. But then once we actually get into space, it feels like the movie actually starts there and becomes really interesting and really just 
you're constantly asking questions, searching for answers. And I think the movie just does a great job at that. Uh, it's overall a great movie. I think it does take a lot of effort to get into, which there comes a point in movies where it's like, yes, I, sh- I, as the viewer, should be putting effort into watching these movies, thinking about what I'm watching, what I'm consuming, but there does come a point when it's just, this is a bit too much. And Solaris kind of, it kind of straws that line a bit. I think Stalker kind of goes over the line a bit. But overall, it's still a really great movie. And those are all the movies I watched. I had a really good time taking a look at some of Tarkovsky's works. Like always, there's a few movies of his that I missed. I might do a video where I just kind of go to the other directors and, you know, take a couple movies that I missed from them and do a video about that. But anyways, if you like this video, leave a comment about this video or on the movies in the video. Uh, Remember, save the blobfish and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.